All right, you guys. They said it couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be done. And I said, hold my beer. I'm making it happen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I managed to fit all of the bridal fair stuff in my car, which is a lot. This is the big, big, big one of the year. Um, so there's like three tables, like all this stuff. Plus, you can't see this, but do you see like who's sitting next to me in the passenger seat? It's my party bag. Okay, so we've got the party bags right next to me here. I did it. And I have the smaller Cadillac. See, when I was doing this the last couple years, I had that big Cadillac. I did it. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Let's head to the bridal fair. All right, we are on our way. Did you see how I said hour there? It's like you're here with me. I'm on my way. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, I do this thing where, you know this from my last one, I like to pack things in in a day. It just makes sense. So I have set up for the Twin Cities Bridal Fair. It's the biggest one in the Twins in Minneapolis and St. Paul. So I have to get set up today. The bridal fair technically isn't until tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. But getting it set up today. So I got to do that in St. Paul. And then I have two parties in St. Paul. Like, boom, boom. So I'm trying to get to St. Paul by noon so that I can get set up. And then I have my first parties at 2. And then my second party is at 530. And I have to apologize to you guys. Oh, my gosh. Like, Last time I did this, it was my first time. The audio quality was terrible. And so we're trying something new today. So I hope that this works out better. But a lot of you liked it, so that's good. And a lot of my team members liked it, so that's what's most important is that that they love it. And you guys, I love, I love doing expos and bridal fairs like this. Uh, my team rocks at it. I have PS, the best team ever. So if you're watching this, hi, unit, yay. But um, I never plan out what I'm going to talk about when I'm, you know, that's not the point of a vlog, right? It's just to have a conversation about things. But what I want to have a conversation about today is just this, right? You want to earn a trip? This is kind of like the behind the scenes stuff on how people earn trips. Like you just see them floating at seminar on the stage and they, you know, they're in a foreign country doing all these really fabulous things. You guys, this is it. This is it. This is the behind the scenes. So this year will be my fourth trip in a row. Okay. So in a row, that's a big deal to me that we've, as a team, our team has earned them in a row because our first trip we earned with no offspring. Okay, so it was like we were just selling machines. We just sold it. It was, um, I still call it the Minneapolis miracle. Like we, oh my gosh. So I'll tell you this story. Prior to finishing our first trip, the, the biggest amount of wholesale our team had ever done in a month was like 38,000, right? Which, you know, that's good. That's not, that's not anything to be ashamed about. That's for dang sure. But it got to the last month and we had been talking about it all year. And that's the key. You got to you gotta pretend like it's June every month of the year and talk about it incessantly the entire year. And we had talked all year long about how it was finally time. Like the Bosch unit was going to be a circle of excellence unit. Like we were doing it. Nothing was going to stop us. And then we got to the last month of the year. And I looked at what we needed to do. And maybe you've done this before where you look at what you have to do to finish your goal in a month and you go, there's just, there's no way. There's just no way. I didn't go into the month thinking no way, but we needed 50, it was like 54,000 wholesale to finish our first trip. Okay. And I was like, no, no, we're hitting it. We're doing it. We're doing it. You know? So all month long we were doing, I've got this whole June playbook. Like we do a thousand dollar day sale. We do all these different things to sell and to recruit and to, you know, really work the business. And it literally got to three days till the end of the month. 
and we had in 27,000 wholesale. Okay, we had 54, we had 27,000 in. And it's so funny, my unit, you guys are awesome. This is why you gotta have awesome team members is because of this. Hopefully this isn't wiggling too much, it might be. Um, because they told me, I might stick something underneath there when I stop up here. Um, so I had this, we had a meeting and I did this big meepy like speech about like, oh my gosh, this is the most we've ever done. I'm so proud of us, blah, blah, blah. Basically kind of giving up because I didn't know in my mind where another 25,000 wholesale was going to come from because I was like, oh my gosh, like we have so much in already. We've already like done so much already. Like where is it going to come from? And so it was this big, be I thought it was a beautiful speech about it. Well, then I wake up the next day. Now we're down to two days left in the month. And the company launched this thing. It was one of the best. You know how they do those deals sometimes for us? It was one of my favorite ones of all time. And it was like hydrogel eye patches, eye makeup remover, lash love mascara, and something else. Two days before the end of the month, the company launches this amazing promotion. And this is the power of being a team, right? So if you're on a team like this, could this could be you. You could be your unit's miracle this year. One of our unit members, who's now a sales director, no surprise, Kate Gall, woke up and, and she texted me this picture she had made to promote this deal to her customers. It was like a skincare bag or a color bag. And I just remember like looking at it and I go, oh my gosh, like it, it, it was all I needed to get my brain out of a block. And I looked at that picture and I just remember thinking like, holy crap we could sell product with this. And so I got everybody on board with it that day. We started selling these like skincare or makeup glam bags. I don't even remember the whole thing. So don't ask me what the promotion was. Cause honestly, I can't tell you, but it made sense on June 28th of 2021. Yeah. 2021. So we start selling those. Well, then I started thinking, and isn't it amazing when you get an idea how all of a sudden possibilities are just like, okay, possibilities, possibilities. So I was thinking possibilities. I'm like, we have a lot of people who aren't great start qualified. That would add a ton of retail to finish this. So then I offered a promotion to people to sell, to get on board with this glam bag thing, to sell, to you know be a part of this or whatever. So then people started getting qualified. And then it's the last day of the month. And, oh my gosh, all this crazy stuff happened. Like, I ended up, like, jumping in this lake. This is, you guys are going to think I'm the most random person on earth. But I was so, just so focused on this goal, nonstop having conversations, nonstop things coming in, nonstop helping consultants. Like, I just need to go jump in the lake for a second. And just, <laughs> it's June in Minnesota, you know, whatever. So I go and jump in the lake. I jump in the lake wrong, and water, like, shoots up into my nose cavity and into my ear like it was the most painful thing I thought I had to go to the hospital and then like later that day my ear ended up popping it was the most painful thing on earth and I was fine but like that happened I don't know there was a couple other weird things like that that happened but midday I remember looking at my husband and I go Darren I think we're gonna hit this and he's like really like yeah I think we're going to hit this. I still had no idea how it was going to happen. So it just, it just kept coming in all day. It just kept happening. And then it got to 1145 and I put in a small order. It wasn't even that big and I needed product because I was selling all day too. And we finished it. And you guys, it was a feeling. The only other time I felt that just like, yeah was when I finished becoming a sales director. I will not repeat the dance I did in my office, but let me tell you, I, I just felt so good. And so I want you to feel good like that too. So point of this whole thing is that to earn stuff, you gotta, you gotta fight for it. Right. And sometimes fighting for it isn't glamorous. It's like jam packing your car full of stuff 
to go get sweaty setting up for a bridal fair so that your team can totally and completely slay the bridal fair tomorrow, get the leads that we all need. And then, you know, not only am I doing that, I'm, I'm holding two parties today. So it's like, it, it's fun. I'm actually really excited about it, but I have three parties tomorrow too. My team's actually doing the bridal fair because they're so good at it now because I've trained them. I'm like, I don't need to sit at this thing. They're awesome. They want to do it. So they're doing it. Super proud of them. Like I said, I have an amazing team. But this is how trips are earned. And you know what I loved about that first, that story I told you? Is the most any one person stretched wholesale wise was 400 to finish the goal. Like we sold it. We sold it. We were making money. Felt good. So anyway, that was COVID trip. So they gave me, okay, this is, this is wild. Okay, so they couldn't do the trip that year. It was to Spain that year. It was 2021. So they gave us all money. Okay, so I'm not even kidding you. With this $52,000 month, and I just want to say I'm not telling you this to brag. I'm telling you this to get excited because I never thought this kind of money, I never thought this kind of money was possible until you got to like a national level. Okay, friends, no. You can do this now on your way to national if that's your dream or whatever your dream is. But so they gave me a big hunk of money for that. I got, I took cash for the half million ring because I have one already. Cash for quarter sharing, cash for, I took cash for everything because I just, I have a bazillion bees and I love my bees, but I, I was like, in COVID mode. And I'm like, I don't need jewelry right now. You know how we get in modes. I was in a mode that year. And with the check just from the 52,000 wholesale, it was some crazy thing. Like $33,000 hit my checking account. Like, can you even imagine? I just want you to imagine for a second that feeling just maybe you can't just try, just like imagine it because it was amazing. And I, and and it all starts with stuff like this, right? So if you're doing things today in your business that you feel like this is not very exciting, I call it um, truly goals, big goals happen in this company doing the boring stuff. I call it making cheese pizza and eating vanilla ice cream, right? If you're presented with a table full of pizzas and some have pepperoni or I don't know, all the good chicken Alfredo toppings or whatever kind of pizza you're into, the likelihood you're going to pick cheese is like this, like 0% chance you're picking cheese because cheese is boring. Yet, yet, cheese is the base of all pizzas, right? It all starts with a crust, it's some cheese, it's some sauce, and it's always a go-to. Same thing with vanilla ice cream. It's not very exciting. But man, that's how every blizzard is made. It's how every dilly bar, whatever ice cream concoction you've ever had in your life basically starts out with a plain base. And so sometimes it's this boring stuff that leads you to that. So that was our first trip. And then the last two, then so money was the COVID trip. And then the second one was Scotland. And I have a video, if you haven't seen my Scotland recap video, it's here on YouTube, but that trip is going to hold a special place for me. I just, that was, uh, the queen died that year. It was incredible. Just being in Scotland during that historical event and, and being a part of that whole thing. And then, and that one I had an offspring. And then this last year I had two more offspring and of course a lot of sales, but that the Scotland year, we actually did 775. So we, we were this close to prestige, man, we could not. And, and it's so funny, isn't it? Like, the year before, when we needed 52,000 wholesale, we we hit it. But that year, we only needed like another 8,000 or something to finish Prestige. And it just, it just didn't come together, right? So sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but you push for it anyway. And then this last year, we did like 675 or something to Spain. So that was fun, um, just earning it without having to think a lot about it. Um, this year, we got to think about it a little more. <laughs> so that's why I'm out, you know, doing all these parties and, you know, we're building a national area too in the process and whatnot. So the reason I'm telling you all this again is because you got to fight for the life you want to live. And if you have not heard the best, I'm just going to call it, okay, you, 
fight me on this, the best seminar speech of all time, of all time, you just go to YouTube, which you're already here, so there you go, step one, check, type in Pam Shaw, you got to fight for the life you want to live, and I want you to listen to that once a month, every month, until June, because that's what I do, I actually listen to that speech once a month, every month, I could recite that speech. It is the best seminar speech of all time. So if you're needing a little inspo, that's what I would recommend. So that. let's talk about the actual point of this video, which is bridal fairs, expos, those kinds of things. I do have some info on my emilyshooty.com website on just how to do a great booth. Bridal fairs, my team and I have really, we've really mastered it. I'm just going to say it like you can be humble about things. I'm not going to be humble about this because we have mastered it and I'm really proud of my team. And so I, I'm going to scream it from the mountaintops at, at how good we are at this. And so I'm just going to give you, I'm going to give you some tips while I'm driving here. First off, how do you get into the bridal industry? Like how do you get these bridal fairs? How do you get, how do you do that? And here's what I'll tell you. It is, it's not always easy because bridal things tend to get scooped up really quickly by other Mary Kay people. And we love them, so it's all good. We're supportive of our sisters, but it's not easy. It's not gonna be easy. So a great place to start, uh, because this is what I did years and years ago, was I went into bridal shops. You know, depending on how big of a city you live in, there's bridal shops around, right? So just walk in, looking cute, and just say, you know, hey, I'm a Mary Kay consultant in the area. I'm just looking to kind of like break into the bridal industry. I'm just curious, like, do you ever do events here at your bridal store, like a trunk show or anything like that? And typically a couple different things will happen. The person working there will say they don't know. They're clearly not the right girl to talk to. You want to talk to like the main gal, like the owner, manager, whoever. Or they'll say, yeah, we do. Uh, like I had this one plus size bridal shop that I loved and they would do this trunk show where they had all these dresses they were trying to move and they would have vendors come into the store while brides were like fighting over these dresses it was spectacular so that was an example that they might do something like that or they might say no we don't and then a follow-up question might you might ask if they don't go into it is well, are you a part of any bridal fairs in the area? Like, do you advertise your store anywhere at a bridal fair or bridal show? Like, have you found, and then if they say yes, like, oh, which one have you found it to be? Jeez Louise people and their cars. Um, have you found it to be successful? And see what they say. So that that's a great starting place. And, and you know what? If you've got multiple bridal stores within an hour radius, go to a mall and ask them all. So that's one way. The other way is just to Google, like go to your friend Google and type in bridal fairs near me and see what comes up. And honestly, my number one tip for breaking in is this. It's so simple. You're going to love this. Don't ever assume. Don't ever assume ever that another Mary Kay person already has it. Because that is how I have gotten the majority of my bridal shows. I never assume another Mary Kay person always has it. Because how many times have you done that where you saw something cool and you're like, oh, probably someone else has it. And so you don't call. The moment, like the moment I learn about a bridal fair, like I see it pop up on Facebook, even if it's a small one. I am like scouring the page for their website, who the contact person is. I drop everything I do and I call or email that second. Like you do not wait because literally two hours could be the difference between you getting signed up for it and someone else nabbing it. I have seen it a hundred times. Get it done, get it in. So never assume and be on it right away. And here's what's cool. Once you get into one, and your name starts getting out there, I now get, I literally this last week, I had some bridal show person up in the north side of the Twin Cities contacting me. Hey, I see you're 
part of the Twin Cities wedding or the Twin Cities bridal show, I'm doing one up here in White Bear Lake. Do you want to be a part of it? So pretty soon you get your name out there enough. People actually start reaching out to you. That's kind of a cool place to be. And you can get signed up for them. Same thing with other kinds of expos. It's not just bridal fairs. You see it, you call about it right away, and you never assume another Mary Kate person has it. So ladies, just do that. Just do that. Um, some other booths that have been really good. I'm just going to be real with you. I'm not a fan of craft fairs. Never have been, never will be. I've sat at too many all day long where the leads aren't, I mean, I get some leads, but it, it's not great. Not a huge fan. Lately, what has been really cool for our team, we found... Actually, one of my awesome unit members is on the board for the Minnesota State Cheerleading Competition. She called me up and was like, hey, do you want to have a booth at the State Cheerleading Competition? And I was like, hmm, moms with daughters, hmm, yes. <laughs> so I got on that right away, and that was an incredible booth, like every person who came to that booth was like target market awesomeness. In fact, I just did a party last night, sold $728 from a lady from that. And I'm, I loved her. She's joining my team. She, we're having coffee this week. So she's signing. Let's just be real. I don't know. She's just amazing. I just really want her on my team. So that's been really good. Um, a bunch of my team members just did the state volleyball competition. They got some great leads from that. So, and, and I even remember back in the day, pre-COVID, I did some great booths at uh, marathon sign-up things. You know how there's a day when you're doing a marathon that they have to go get their jersey and their number and their stuff? Well, they had vendors. They had, you know, most of it was running clothes and stuff like that. But I thought, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. I did that and met just, you know, women who want to take care of themselves, obviously, because they're running a marathon. Uh, and you have to be a certain age to run it, all that kind of stuff. So just an incredible, incredible booth there, too. So I'm just giving you some ideas to start thinking outside of the box. Because, you know, going back to just earning big things, whether it's Maybe it's just red jacket for you. It doesn't matter. It could be red jacket. It could be just being a consistent SAR consultant. It could be earning a trip. It could be being a sales director. Maybe you are a sales director and you want to get in this Cadillac. It really starts with a, with a steady influx of leads. I'm convinced of this. Um, I talk about this all the time. It's new faces take you places, not the same 10 faces you see every single month take you places. It's not that those people aren't great and we don't want to keep servicing them and we don't want to keep updating them on products, but you've got to be in front of new faces to get the new recruits to sell new amounts of product to move forward. You just do. And so uh, what are your lead streams, right? Um, winter time here in Minnesota is a big booth expo time. But in the spring, summer, we do other things because there's not many, as many booths during that time. So, yeah, just some ideas for you. All right, you guys. <laughs> I had to stop and get a cheeseburger. Uh, I love Culver's. Sorry if you don't live where there's Culver's. They have the best, the best. They're called butter burgers. They don't have butter on them. They just are like butter in your mouth. So good. I go through these stints where I'll drink like Dew of the Universe and eat kale, and then I'm like, I just need a cheeseburger. Anyway, food is fuel, right? So anyway, we're talking about bridal fare, so I wanted to go circle back after my little fast food break here. Why are we so good at bridal fairs? This is the key. Okay, so now you know how to like get into them and or other expos that are great. Here's just some of the keys, right? One is having a good drawing slip right? Uh, I have mine on my website. The bigger, they're bigger, so they fit on like a little tiny clipboard, but it's not even that. It's really not that important. I'm going to be real with you. It's that when you're doing the booth, right, people are not 
you've never done a booth before, I'm just going to shoot you on a like, People are not going to come to your booth and be like, what's this? What are you offering? In fact, just the opposite. A lot of them are going to be like this and like running by. And so you have to have things that draw people into your booth. Okay. So I like to, when I do the display and I'll take a video of it so you can see what mine looks like. I like to have interactive products there. So what are products we can interact with? Perfumes are great. Colognes are great. Hand creams, hand sanitizers, things you can interact with that they can try right at your booth are great. The other thing, just in case you've never done one, I just want to reiterate the rules. You cannot, cannot sell products at a booth. So don't even think you're going to bring your inventory and be selling products. Now, the lines are a little blurry because if you have a woman who comes up to your booth and says, oh, my gosh, do you have extra emollient night cream? Because that's usually the thing people are looking for or I make a promover. I'll say, no, actually, we're not selling products here today. But, you know, do you have a beauty consultant that you work with? And a lot of times she'll say yes. She just thought it would be really convenient to get it from you since you're right there. And I'll say, oh, you know what? I bet your girl will you know, service you, do you have her phone number? You know, I always make sure they know how to get a hold of her. Otherwise I'll look it up for her on the spot. Cause I'm nice like that. But if she doesn't, Oh no, I had a consultant years ago. She doesn't sell anymore. Great. I would love to, if you need that eye makeup remover, would love to get your info and I can get it to you after the expo. So you're not selling at the expo, but if you have someone you've checked, she doesn't have a consultant. She needs things. Heck yeah, girlfriend. Like, get her info and reach out to her. So I just want to reiterate that we do not sell at booths. And, and quite frankly, let's talk about that for a second. And then I might need to eat my cheeseburger and come back. But, you know, people get bummed about, out by that sometimes. Like, oh, it'd be so great if we could sell at booths. Or I'll have customers ask me like, oh, that's a bummer. You can't sell at a booth. Or other vendors that are at these expos will say, oh, well, that must be so hard for you. You know, they want to commiserate with me and I never commiserate with people. So sorry. <laughs> they, you know, they, they, oh, such a bummer, Mary Kay, you can't sell at booths. And I just think, you know, I don't want to sit at expos every weekend to, to sell my product. I don't want to do that. I mean, I don't even do that many, probably with the bridal fairs and the expos I do, I probably do like six a year, six or seven things total a year, like expo -y things. That's enough for me. I, I do not have a strong desire to do more than that. I don't need to do more than that. Plus, okay, fine. Let's say we could sell it at an expo or a bridal fair. You'd probably make decent money that day, but that's it. Like the way that I do it, I book them. I meet their moms, their aunts, their sisters, their best friends. I get their referrals. I recruit them. That is long term right? Selling is just addition to your income. Selling is addition. Uh, selling, booking, and team building is multiplication. And then you start building offspring and that's like multiplication, division, addition, the whole shebang. It's, it's great. So, I mean, if you're talking long-term predictable income, we do not care about selling at booths, my friends. So I just wanted to say that. I'll be back. I got to eat this cheeseburger. Whew, that was a good cheeseburger. All right. I'm going to give you the secret sauce. I know you've been waiting for it. You've been so patient and I'm all over the place. So <laughs> apologies. How do I word this? The reason my team rocks at booths is because we have figured out the secret sauce for a high convert rate. Okay. So what that means is you're not just going and getting leads and checking a box and saying, yay, I did it. I'm awesome. You're getting leads with the intention that you want to convert these leads into bookings, which then converts into sales and team members and all the things. So there are things that you can do at your booth to have a higher convert rate. So that's what I want to talk about. And the first thing that I want to talk about is I'm kind of weaving two things together. People don't buy from you just because they like you or because you share your like life story with them. They buy from you because they perceive you to be an expert at what you do. Now, you might be a newer consultant and you think, well, I'm not an expert. 
yeah, but you probably know more than she does, maybe, you know? So being an expert doesn't mean you know everything. It just means that you're a professional and you know how to rec make a recommendation or you know how to carry yourself, all of those things. So people buy from you because they perceive you to be an expert. So one of the things that we do as a team to have a higher convert rate, and also the reason I told you that thing about being an expert, I'm not a big fan, okay? Now again, if you do this, like it's okay. It's good, better, best. It's all good. It's just my opinion. You don't have to like it. <laughs> um, I'm really adamant about it, no bait and switch, meaning we tell people one thing, but it's really something else, but we tell them it because we're insecure about actually offering them what we offer. This is all going to make sense in a minute. Just stay with me, people, okay? I can get conceptual sometimes, but just stay with me. It's going to make sense. And, and in the Mary Kay world, I think sometimes we do it. It is not intentionally, okay? So bait and switch just means, yeah, like if you've ever, it, it's like a salesperson tells you one thing just to get you in, but then they do something else, right? <clears throat> I'm not a huge fan of it. So one way we unintentionally bait and switch people is when we do a drawing at a booth, which is what I always do, right? A lot of people say, you want a deluxe, ultimate, super snazzy, extra awesome, spa, pampering package, whatever, facial spa pampering package. It's like all these like basically buzzwords strewn together. Again, it's okay if you've, I've done it before. Okay. Like just full disclosure, not knocking it, not knocking anybody, but you want to have a higher convert rate and not just convert into booking. Because here's the reality, you guys, when people trust you, and like you want people that you meet with to go, Emily's the real deal, right? Insert your own name. Emily's the real deal. Like what she says is what she does. <clears throat> and you start doing that in all avenues of your business. Like, let's say you book someone like that. Like what you say is what you do. She trusts you. Well, now she wants to refer her friends to you because of that trust. Or, um, she is feel safe joining your team because she trusts you, right? Because what, what she sees is what she gets. But, you know, if we aren't careful, we can easily erode that trust. And then it just takes, it's such a longer process to recruit them and all that stuff. Anyway, back to it. What we offer is special. Okay. I'm just, in case you need to be sold out on this, you need to be sold out on this. What we offer is special. I don't care that there's TikTok and YouTube and all these things doing tutorials. A YouTube tutorial on how to apply makeup is not going to tell her how what colors work for her specifically. And people today want customization, and we offer that. So why not just offer what we offer, right? We don't have to... We don't have to package it in this pretty bow of all these like industry buzzwords like spa, deluxe facial spa, pampering package or whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. And so here's how you increase your convert rate. So you're doing a drawing at your booth, which highly recommend do a drawing, right? Everybody's a winner. It's, it's amazing. And if you have a complex about the everyone's a winner thing, here's, here's how I got through that really fast is that people are excited to win. They don't give a crap that other people won too. They really don't. They're just excited that they won. I get people all the time who are like, I never win anything. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I won. Like, they're just so excited. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we're past that. Doing it some type of drawing. And so I always keep it vague, the drawing vague-ish if I'm doing it with other consultants. So for example, if I'm doing a booth with other consultants, I might say, we're doing a drawing today. We're giving away some charcoal mask treatments, some makeovers, and some gift cards. If you'd like to sign up for that, give them the slip. Because I might want to offer something different than the consultant working the booth next to me. And that just keeps it like vague enough that 
you know, she can offer whatever the heck she wants to offer and I can offer what I want to offer. So the secret sauce is this. While she's filling out the slip, this is how you're going to increase the convert rate. While she's filling it out, you are going to position yourself as the expert, right? And you are going to tell her the value she's going to get out of meeting with you, even though she doesn't know she's going to meet with you yet, <laughs> right? Because it's a drawing, <clears throat> but you're planting the idea. If you've ever seen the movie Inception with Leo DiCap Leonardo DiCaprio, it's one of my favorite. Not, it's not a favorite movie. It's just a favorite thought where like they, it's like this uh, sci-fi, I love sci-fi movies where they go into someone's brain and they plant an idea and it changes the trajectory of everything. It's like a dream inside of a dream inside of a dream. It's like you're, so Inception is you're planting the idea and she doesn't even know you're planting it. So let me just walk you through what that looks like at a bridal fair. And again, I'm going to offer what we offer because what we offer is awesome and brides and people want it. So, um, bride comes up to the booth. We hand her a bag. I'll get into the bags in a second. Oh, did you get a bag from us yet? No. Oh, great. Here's a bag. <clears throat> oh, and we're doing, um, we're doing a really fun drawing today. We're giving away some um, charcoal mask treatments and some step-by-step -step makeup applications and gift cards. Here's the slip. Yep, your bridal party can sign them too. So they're all filling out the slips. And then I'll say this. You ever tried Mary Kay before or used it or anything? Yeah, I've heard of it. I just want to tell you, we work a little bit differently in the bridal industry. We don't actually do day of wedding makeup. What we do is really cool. We get together with brides way ahead of time. It's kind of like skincare and makeup lessons. We teach you how to shade and contour your eyes and what colors work for you and, you know, help you with any skincare stuff, you know, before your wedding so you can look your best. But not just so you can look good on your wedding day. Like, it's great if you want to DIY your makeup. But I'm going to teach you how to look good for everything, not just your wedding day, like your honeymoon, your shower, your bachelorette party, because you probably want to look good for all that stuff, right? And she's like, yeah, I do. Awesome. So I call it skincare and makeup lessons because that's kind of what we do, right? Like we teach. It's a teaching approach. So I just call the thing the thing. It's skincare and makeup lessons. But I'm implanting the idea of the value of what we offer while she's filling out the slip. And a lot of times while they're filling it out, they're like this, they'll say, well, how much does it cost? Like, I just, this sounds like something I'd really want to do. And I'll say, you know what? I'll just take your slip right now and I'll just make a note of that. And I'll, I'll give you a call. And, and it's all, it's like an automatic booking. It's amazing. So, so telling them the value of what we offer while they're filling out the slip versus just sitting there making small talk about the weather or your dog or, you know, whatever. It's like, no, this is, this is what's great about Mary Kay. And it legit is different. We're not just, we're not just doing some sales presentation. We're teaching them actual tips on how to look good. And you know, what's awesome. Most of these bridal appointments I do, I do a dash out the door look because most of them wear like zero makeup. So they just want to look good for all the wedding stuff. And you know, when they say, oh, but I, I'm probably going to hire someone day off. I'm like, that's perfect. Go for it. I, you know, actually recommend that. If you want to hire someone day off, go for it. I don't do day of wedding makeup. There's like licensing stuff with that. And quite frankly, I, I don't think the money's good enough in it. And it's, it's, it's stressful. Like if you've ever done, I've done makeup for like friends, weddings and stuff. It's, it's a lot. Like, can I do fake lashes on everybody? It's this whole crazy thing. So that's fine. If she wants to hire someone for a wedding, I'm going to teach you how, how to look good for everything else, right? So you're talking about that. Then afterwards, then you direct her to your booth. Like, oh, you know, before you go, go check out our fragrances. One of the things we recommend for brides is to pick a fragrance that you love, that you start wearing the day of your wedding. And not before then, but on the day of your wedding. So then every day after that, when you wear it, it reminds you of your wedding day. And they're like, oh, well, that's such a good idea. I'm like, I know it is. <laughs> um, and so then they try the fragrances. I'm not selling the fragrances there, but I'm just selling them on the idea of that. And it's, it's kind of like, here's a freebie for you. Here's a free tip that you're just going to get for me on the spot. Just imagine how many you're going to get when we meet in person. Again, I don't say that, but it's that inception piece. Um, same thing when you, you're honoring working women or anytime you're doing 
you're warm chatty. You're do I don't care what you're doing. Talk about what we offer. Talk about it. And you know, it, it's gonna be different. It might be like, oh, you know what's so cool about Mary Kay is it's so hard to find like your perfect foundation shade these days. Like, do you ever feel that way? Like if you're warm chatting someone, that's one of the things we're so that is so different about us. Like we actually sit down with you and sit down with people and help them figure all that out. It's kind of like skincare and makeup lessons, <laughs> but you get to do it live with your girlfriends and whatever. So talk about what we offer because we don't have to hide it behind all this fancy language. We can actually just say the, call the thing, the thing and people want it. And then, and then you go into that appointment and she trusts you because you you called the thing the thing and you delivered on the thing. Like, heck yeah. That's that's the kind of business I like running. And I'm telling you, it's not just your booking convert rate. You have to have those conversations so that you're connecting with them. It's not just like, here's a drawing slip. Now you're a nameless, faceless person in this drawing that I'm going to call everybody. You've made that connection. But you got to do it quick, okay? So you got to spit this out quick. So if you're doing a booth for the first time, I might recommend practicing before you do it. So, yeah. So, yeah. So that's how we convert the leads is offering them something. And we do these bags. We have, um, there's a bit of them right behind me, actually. It's a Mary Kay shopping bag, a uh, wooden rose, and just like an eyeshadow sample. So it's, it's giving them something. We have people waiting in line for our bridal booth. Like they are waiting in line because they don't know what's in that bag, but heck yeah, they want the bag. And it doesn't cost me a lot either. Okay, we're here, friends. Hi. How's it going? Good, I'm here for the bridal booth. All right, loading in? Yeah. Okay. Got another vehicle coming in, loading in for the bridal show. You're good to go, man. Thank you. Yep. This is one of the big convention places in the Twin Cities, so they have one of those fancy schmancy loading docks. Ooh, here we go, setting up. Um, but yeah, we give away those bags, and people like wait in line for them. I don't always do that at other expos. I might just give away wooden flowers, like, oh, did you give get a wooden rose from us yet? Um, that type of thing. Oh. I only get so much time in the loading dock, so we're going to do this quick so I don't have to pay for parking later. I did it. I got all set up for the bridal fair without having to pay parking. Woo, it's a good day. <laughs> anyway, super pumped. I'm driving to my first party today. It was a great setup. I just wanted to finish a couple thoughts about just like bridal fairs and stuff. So one little tip that will help you keep sanity if you start doing a lot of booths is I have this old suitcase that kind of wasn't my favorite and I just turned it into my booth suitcase so that's what I use and all of my booth stuff just stays in there so that every time I'm doing a booth I'm not running around hunting for it I hate hunting and gathering I even got to the point where I just like decided you know what I'm just going to open a whole set of products just for a booth and never have to take it out of my party bag or take it out put it back in my inventory. It just like people touch it. It's just no. So I just keep everything now in a suitcase. And, um, just going back to the bags too, like, and, and the flowers, I kind of got cut off when we were talking about this. I do think that having something to give people is good. Um, but something that's not expensive either. You don't want to spend a lot of money, uh, giving stuff. And when we do bridal fairs, what we do is we say, oh my gosh, we have a goodie bag for the bride. So only the bride gets the bag. 
and her entourage and I say, oh my gosh, we have eyeshadow samples over here, which happens to be the same table that they sign up for the drawing. We have um, eyeshadow samples over here for the entourage and I have this like really pretty pink bowl with just like tons of eyeshadow samples and they can pick one out of there to try. And they just think that's so cool. And here's the thing. I don't love giving samples away, but eyeshadow samples are cheap, right? You can get a bazillion of them on a sheet. And it's a way to bring the entourage to the booth, right? Because I want them to sign up too. We have everybody sign up, not just the bride. I think that's the best idea ever, to just have everybody sign up because sometimes the bride is like from out of town or whatever, but her bridesmaids maybe want to do a fun session with you. So um, get them all. And then what we do we have these tiny little staplers. We actually just staple like a whole group together. We don't, you know, we don't make it obvious that we're doing that, but we like to keep groups together so that we just pick maybe one or two winners out of a group. So we do keep them stapled together. And, you know, we really just focus on during the booth, like making the relationship as much as possible, but you've got to chat with them and move on. You can't sit and tell your life story. If you're a talker, you've got to keep it short, but yet connective with them so that you can move on, especially when you you get busy, friends, and you've got a line of people waiting. I mean, literally at the bridal fair, I said this earlier, we end up having a, a ta like a line of people just like wanting to get our bag. It's the best feeling in the world when people are so excited to come to your booth. And then it sort of builds upon itself because everyone coming by sees, well, everyone's at that booth for some reason, waiting for something. So I should wait for something too. It just creates this kind of frenzy, <laughs> which is great. And it's such a fun way to meet people. And, you know, of course you get the leads and, and that kind of thing, but you need to contact and book those leads within 24 to 48 hours. Um, at least get that first contact done. You, know, you aren't necessarily going to book them that quickly um, because the farther away you book them, the less real it seems, the less they remember who you even were. And they met a bazillion people at the bridal fair too. So um, definitely make sure you get to those leads right away. And you know what? Have so much fun doing a booth. If you've never done one, just try it and do it multiple times. You get really good at it and use the tips that I gave you. You're going to be good to go, sister.